Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Um, so there's been a lot happening uh, in the United States um, these last several days. Um, you know, whether you, you live in the U.S. or in a different part of the world, you've probably heard a lot about it. And so um, I've been thinking the last couple of days whether I wanted to uh, post a video actually, you know, uh, addressing all of these issues. Um, what I think is that, well, first, you know, first of all, because, um, you know, we can really only speak from our own experience for the most part, um, you know, other than having a genetic disease and therefore a disability, um, you know, I come from a, you know, fairly uh, privileged background in you know terms of race, um, e economic background, um, gender, and everything else, and so you know I don't really have a lot to say from my personal experience. So you know a lot of the people you know who you have heard you know giving their experience um, are really the ones um, that you should be listening to. Uh, but I do want to, you know, add um, a few things, you know, based on my um, scientific background and in, in, in particular my study of genetics and, you know, interest in healthcare advocacy and that. Because I think, um, you know, those are some issues that, you know, we're, we're thinking about a little bit. Um, okay, so... Um, Several years ago, I heard the statement made that, you know, race is a social construct, okay? And at the time, I didn't quite know what that meant or what, um, you know, whether I agreed with it. Uh, but the more I sort of study and understand genetics, um, you know, the more that I um, you know, really agree that that's true. The tradition in the U.S. has been to, you know, categorize people as having, you know, uh, being of one race or another, and the races are kind of arbitrary. If you actually look at um, genetics, as people have done through, um, you know, extensive um, DNA analysis, um, what you discover is that there's more genetic diversity within sub-Saharan Africa, um, partly because that's where people first originated, um, than in the rest of the world put together. Even though um, traditionally, um, you know, people from, you know, East Asia, South Asia, Europe, the Americas, um, have all been categorized as different race. No, compared to people um, in Africa, um, they all look very much the same uh, at a genetic level. Um, it turns out that the things that we most tend to categorize people by, you know, things like you know hair and skin color, are actually some of the easiest things um, to, you know, that um, adapt when people um, migrate from one part of the world to another. Um, you know, and in a place like the U.S., and, you know, this also um, applies to, you know, a number of other countries where there's been immigration from, you know, different parts of the world, um, it's actually very rare that people are all from one background anyway. You know, that's kind of what, um, you know, in the genetic sequencing services that um, you can have, um, you know, we discovered, okay, most people, you know, thought they were, you know, of, of one background, but it turns out they, you know, in many cases, they have a mixture of a few different things that they didn't even know about. So, you know, but, um, okay, so, you know, a person's ancestry, you know, is a real thing, but our social categorization of that um, is a construct. So, you know, that's the first thing I'll say. 
Now, you know, the, um, as far as genetic diseases, um, first I will say that, you know, for muscular dystrophies, which are the, um, you know, what I've spent most of my time thinking about genetically, um, I know people in, you know, of, you know, every, you know, ethnic background group um, who have, you know, my type of muscular dystrophy. And that goes across, you know, most forms of muscular dystrophy. Um, and that's actually um, something that um, uh, I'm working with some other people and we're trying to uh, arrange a uh, meeting with the FDA to give them uh, the patient perspective on people with um, limb girdle muscular dystrophy. Um, and one of, you know, the important considerations is to make sure that, you know, in the group of patients that are, you know, presenting, giving their life experiences, that they, you know, adequately represent um, not only different genetic types of muscular dis of LGMD, you know, but also, um, you know, to make the point that this affects people of, you know, both genders, um, different ages, um, any ethnic background that, you know, you want to choose, you know, to, you know, make the point that this is, you know, um, you know, real, really an equal opportunity disease. Um, now, there are some genetic diseases where, you know, they are associated with a you know particular um, ethnic group or background, and a lot of those um, cases originated because um, you know being a carrier, uh, which usually means for a recessive disease you don't actually have the disease or any symptoms, uh, made you immune to um, you know some other disease, kind of the classical. Um, um, thing that's probably the best known is um, sickle cell anemia. Um, tends to, um, the, the, there's one particular mutation and everyone that, that carries that mutation probably inherited it from a single person, you know, many thousands of years ago. Um, but being a carrier makes you uh, resistant to malaria. So even though people who actually had the disease were at a big disadvantage, people um, who were carriers, you know, often had a survival advantage from, you know, something like, you know, malaria, which, you know, is endemic to many parts of the world. Um, that's, there's also one subtype of limb girdle muscular dystrophy, um, 2I, the the protein is called FKRP, where um, there's one particular mutation that's very common in people of Northern European ancestry. So, you know, maybe, um, you know, being a carrier at some point, you know, made you resistant to, you know, some other really nasty disease, and that's why being a carrier um, may, you know, um, why so many people today, you know, have the same mutation in that gene. Um, but for the most part, you know, in my particular um, genetic type of LGMD, um, you know, it, it, you know, it exists and I personally know people, you know, of, you know, pretty much every ethnic background in the world. Um, but that said, um, if you're trying to develop treatments, um, you know, and particularly, um, you know, in the United States, uh, you know, most of what you've heard talked about the last few um, couple weeks is, you know, uh, institutionalized uh, racism, you know, um, as reflected in, among um, you know, treatment of different people by uh, law enforcement and by the justice system, which is an which is an issue, but also um, the healthcare system. Um, you know, is everybody um, of different backgrounds going to have healthcare access? 
Um, if a treatment for you know, some disease is developed, um, is it going to be available to everybody? And you know, because the um, healthcare system and the method of financing it is you know, kind of unique in the United States um, and frankly very complicated, um, that's a big issue. So, um, you, know, you know, as we start to move towards treatments, you know, making sure that everyone who needs a treat, you know, needs a treatment and is a candidate for the treatment actually will have access to it is going to be um, a big deal. Um, we've already seen that with the COVID epidemic in the United States, you know, there's been you know, um, you know, a fair amount of disparity by ethnicity noted uh, in the U.S. Um, so, you know, there's, you know, it's, um, it's a complicated problem and there's a lot of work to be done on that. Um, kind of uh, right now, people have been talking about, you know, police and the justice system but there's also a lot in healthcare access and equitable treatment, um, you know, for you know people um, of different backgrounds. Uh, now, one thing I want to note before I go is that um, you know I'd mentioned in earlier videos that um, uh, Sarepta was uh, planning to um, release the results of their gene therapy trial in LGMD2E. Um, and they've now announced that, that that's going to happen um, the morning of Monday, uh, June 8th, um, so um, a little over a day from now. Um, it's um, unfortunately like 5.30 in the morning in my time zone, so I'm probably going to be getting up really early. Um, I don't know what they're going to say. They certainly have not told me and are, you know, keeping it very um, tight-lipped. Um, I'm optimistic, but um, we'll, we'll see what it means, and so I'll probably be um, posting a video on that, and, you know, then um, probably we'll be uh, posting videos um, giving a little bit more about, um, you know, gene and cell ther ther therapies. Um, as, um, yeah, so anyway, hope you're, hope you're doing well and, um, yes, um, you know, um, you know, listen, listen to the experiences of, you know, people who, um, you know, maybe, you know, whose experiences you aren't familiar with. So, um. I'll talk to you later.